Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And this week, now the engine is in, we're going to start buttoning up all the rest of the little bits and pieces in the engine bay of the Alfa Ferrari. All right, guys, welcome back. And last week was a giant milestone of actually getting the Ferrari engine into the engine bay, hopefully for the last time, but we'll see about that. Uh, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and do think about subscribing. It does really help the channel out. Um, so yes, last week I put the engine in and uh, it wasn't without some dramas. It took me, you know, so much time. It took me almost a whole day to actually get the engine in and bolt it up, just with uh, lots of adjusting and, and things like that that you sort of didn't really get on camera, but that's, uh, that's just how it goes. This stuff doesn't always go to plan and go really smoothly, and like I mentioned, I'd sort of welded the entire engine bay solid after uh, I'd done all the private previous fittings, so there was just little tweaks that needed to be done. Any case, it's in now. The bonnet is just sitting there, and uh, there are a bunch of things to put into the engine bay to sort of uh, start finishing it up. So um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to move this forward, and uh, I might actually get some paint work done first, so that then um, that can sort of set up over the next day or so, and then I can start looking at putting some of these extra bits and pieces into the engine bay, give it time to dry. So now I've used the full range of the Raceworks fittings and uh, I've found that I actually like the push lock style fittings the best. The hoses are the most flexible and uh, sort of the easiest to put together. Definitely my pick with a factory looking finish. All right, so I spent a whole lot of time then putting in the uh, the bulkhead connectors. So these two here, these are the heater. So that's the heater in, that's the heater out, which I still need to make up and join up to the radiator when I add that in. Um, I put the fuel lines in, that's connected up to the fuel lines. That actually, there's a Y piece down there that goes around to the other side and, uh, and did a whole bunch of measuring for um, these pieces here, which are going to the throttle body. These are actually the breather return from the dry sump tank. Uh, they actually are going to join up down underneath the uh, electrical bulkhead fittings there. I had to re, uh, re jig them. The back half of this uh, top bulkhead connector is not actually uh, uh, is not actually pinned. There's actually no, uh, I, I haven't actually wired that one up yet. The bottom one is, uh, is wired. That's wired to the ECU. The top one um, is most of the power and the sort of the bigger, uh, heavier connections that go into that. And, uh, and then down underneath, those are two bulkhead connectors that go to my dry sub tank. So uh, one of them is, uh, as I said, is the breather return. And the other one has got to go from the PCVs. And I'm just, uh, I've been talking with the guys at Raceworks to try and work out how to um, do the PCVs. For those who don't understand, that's pressure crankcase ventilation. So basically, if any gas is leaked by the rings or, or just... Uh, crankcases will build up a bit of pressure and so you need to release those gases that pressure out of the crankcase and there's a one-way valve in uh, on the top and this is going to go back in and feed in and uh, any of the oil vapor is just going to go back into the dry sump tank and, and recirculate back in through the engine again so what we're looking for is just taking uh, some other cars factory PCV and uh, and joining these two uh, lines together and uh, connecting them up and putting them back into the dry sump tank down in there so so we are getting there as far as those lines go so I thought now we'd have a look at the vacuum actuation system all right, so uh, like I mentioned uh, with the variable valve butterflies that I'm going to use the factory Ferrari uh, vacuum tank. Like I said, this was extremely cheap uh, uh, on the scheme of things. So that is gonna be used. And uh, I just ordered a couple of these. I think they might be, these are uh, vacuum valves. I think they're off of a RAV4. And, um, and basically they actually have three fittings on them, three, three 
inlet. So there's there's an inlet and outlet and uh, basically a release. Because I was first worried when I was thinking about this that uh, basically when, if this was just a valve that opened up, uh, it would suck the vacuum and then uh, when, when, when you've opened it up, when you close it off again, the vacuum's still stuck in the system so it won't leak out. But that's what this uh, extra port is for. It'll actually leak that vacuum out so that the, uh, the valves will flat back again and, uh, and it sort of goes through that cycle. So uh, I've got this now. I have to mount this and this. And once you've got a painted car and it's definitely not going in the engine bay because this is big and ugly. Uh, and so with this, so I have been doing some thinking and I think I found a spot. So down under the driver's wheel arch and up above the air filter is where my dry sump tank is gonna sit. And I'm gonna mount it up here and I have to drill a couple of holes through the edge up, up the top here, which is going to come out uh, underneath uh, this lip up here. That's where I'm going to be bolting it on. All right, so um, just showing my stuff up. So, so I've got one bolt that's sort of hidden underneath the, uh, um, the, the check strap, the bonnet check strap, and uh, the other bolt hole is, needs to be there. But I measured it inside and got these two shapes confused and actually drilled it there first, which is not where I need it. But uh, it's not that big of an issue. And you actually see I need to still need to trim off my uh, PPF that's looking pretty ugly along there. But uh, yeah, that's not a big issue. I can, uh, I can, just plug it up. Um, but it's annoying when I drill and I don't need a drill. It's a nice secure vacuum tank. I've got room for my headlight. I've got room for my air filter. So uh, that is looking good. All right, I've gradually been grabbing bits and pieces and chucking them uh, into the car, just randomly trying to get the front end all buck buttoned up. And uh, I have been searching everywhere for the last 40 minutes or so, trying to find the brackets I made to hold my uh, radiator in. And uh, do you think I can find them anywhere? No. So I'm going to have to make them again. It's just what happens because everything in this car has sort of been built and then put in a spot and then had to be moved to find something else and now everything's scattered to the four winds and uh, it's really my disorganization that's making this take so much longer than it needs to. So anyway, uh, let's make up some brackets. I've really become a huge fan of the world-class plasma cutter. It just makes cutting thicker material so much easier. Just hold a fence and slide along. It's just quick and simple and uh, makes a nice, neat job. All right, new radiator brackets are made up and in. I've just uh, mocked up my cover. This is all just lightly mocked up for now because uh, I've still got to put the bonnet on and the uh, the hinges sort of go through and this goes on after the hinges. It's just more making sure everything fits and works the way it's supposed to. So now I can start looking at running those vacuum lines uh, from the throttle actuators through to the vacuum tank. So for these sort of jobs, rear nuts are definitely the way to go, nice and simple, and uh, particularly with something that's pre-painted where I don't want to bubble paint. So here I'm fitting the one-way valves so that uh, the vacuum doesn't leak out of the tank, then running the vacuum lines to all the different fittings for the variable inlet actuation. Alright, so you can see here I've got my air tank and I've got uh, my mess of air lines. So basically there's four different air lines going into these solenoids. It's all tucked up under here. There's still plenty of room for my headlight and that sort of stuff. Um, so 
that's quite a, uh, a reasonably neat solution. Uh, there's a lot of uh, vacuum lines, but that's just what it takes to uh, get the system going. But I'm quite happy with that. It's all mounted in, um, still relatively uh, hidden, and uh, we can move forward. All right, so last thing I think I'm gonna to tackle today is fitting my air filters. So um, basically I've got these big BMC carbon air filters that are going underneath the front guards. This will just connect nice fresh air from in behind the headlights. The air gets in from around the headlights. So that's a, um, a nice sort of sheltered spot for it. So All right, and the air filters are now mounted. And this week, it just felt like I was chasing my tail a lot, looking for lots of bits and pieces that, uh, yeah, I just, I'm not organized enough. Uh, as, as big as this garage might seem, it's still just, it's just a mess. I just don't have enough room to store everything I need to store for multiple projects. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. And uh, anyway, uh, I have made a fair bit of progress, at least. I've got some more orders in with Raceworks for a bunch of bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, we've got a, a whole bunch of the front end buttoned up. So um, I think next week uh, we may actually start moving on to the interior again. Um, we need to start looking at something for a center console and, um, and sort of making sure all the seats and the center console and all the bits and pieces fit together so we can start trimming an interior and getting that ready to go as well. So we're working our way through the car um, it's, uh, yeah, just working with what I've got and, and trying to find things. So anyway, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Ferrari 550 Maranello is a front-engine V12 Grand Tourer that was produced by Ferrari between 1996 and 2001. It was designed to be a successor to the Ferrari 512 TR and was named after the company's hometown of Maranello. The 550 was a significant model for Ferrari as it marked their return to front-engine V12 GTs 23 years since the Daytona. The company's engineers decided to go back to basics and build a car that was simple, elegant and had a strong V12 engine. The Ferrari 550 was designed by Pininfarina and its styling was a far cry from the sharp edges of the 512 TR. It had a more rounded and organic design with a long hood, short overhangs and a distinctive grille. The car's aerodynamics were also significantly improved with a drag coefficient of 0.33. Under the hood, the Ferrari 550 was powered by a 5.5 litre V12 engine capable of producing 485 horsepower and 419 pound-feet of torque. The car was mated to a six-speed manual transmission and was capable of 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds and had a top speed of 199 miles per hour. In 2000, Ferrari produced a new version of the 550, the 550 Barchetta. This was a true Barchetta in the sense that there was no roof, although Ferrari did supply a light cloth roof to be used for light rain. However, it wasn't deemed to be safe to go over 70 miles per hour with the roof on. 444 Barchettas were due to be produced. However, Japanese concerns about the number four being bad luck meant that in the end, 448 Vaquettas were produced. Today, the Ferrari 550 is considered a classic and it's highly sought after by collectors and enthusiasts. It is also known for its appearance in popular culture, such as Bad Boys 2 and the video game Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. All right, well, that's another week uh, just doing lots of little bits and pieces, but we're getting there. We've got uh, air filters on and things like that now, which is, uh, which is looking really good. Um, Next week, hopefully, we can start getting back into the interior. I'm looking forward to uh, starting to play around with that. I've had the leather sitting around for a while and stuff like that, so you guys hopefully will be interested in seeing that. But first of all, we need to make some sort of center console to be able to fit with the seats and everything. So there's there's still plenty more to go. It's uh, it's definitely not on the road yet, but uh, but I'm liking the progress so far. We might get to see Jeff in his sewing room, and he has one, because every man should have a sewing room. Yes. 
it's very manly sewing. It's manly sewing room. It is. It's a, it's a great yes. craft. Um, I wish I was as good as you are at sewing. Mm. I always have to uh, hem any of uh, Mrs. Mm. Jeff's uh, clothing if she's got buttons need to be sewn on. Anyway, that's probably to too much it. information for our viewers. So, But yes, uh, <laughs> like, subscribe, and uh, <laughs> yeah. um, yes. Patreon, you know what to do. And yeah, see you next time. See you guys. Significant car for Ferrari because it... Okay, come in here. Decided to go back to basics and build a car that was strong and elegant. <sighs> the car's aerodynamics were also significantly. Yes. Yeah, smash that one. Capable of reaching 485 horsepower with a pound feet of torque of 419. And pound feet of torque, 419. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fine. That's rude.